food slice. You, you can make it a food slice, sir. Yes, yes uh, sir. it's full now. Can we see it? Can we see it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can see it. Okay. Uh, thank you and I uh, appreciate the time given to me. I'll try to run the program within the scheduled time and then so we can all look at the question thereafter. Uh, by way of formal introduction, my name is Ademola Olarawaju. I'm the managing partner of Ascension Consulting Services. And what we do is that we talk tax and we do tax. And that's where we are here today to look at the topic. And the topic that has been assigned to me, we can actually expand it in the course of the presentation. It's mainly about corporate governance and tax risk management. What are the tax risk control? So the core focus of the presenter will be about on management of tax risk by major organization. And that will be the entire summary of the presentation. Um, so the, tab the table of contents will go in form of the introduction and overview of corporate governance. What is task risk management? What is task risk control? Uh, assessment procedure, tax assessment and penalties. And then we'll look at the conclusion and then we'll take questions as much as possible. And at the end of today's presentation, I expect uh, all the participants to see the need for task compliance and then to understand the type of risk that could crop up in the process of the uh, daily tax activities. Even though just having a tax uh, transaction in our daily recognition of opinion, all this we are going to take away at the end of the day and the need for tax risk management process. Uh, the first of it is the uh, introduction to corporate uh, governance. We are looking at the core issue here that despite the series of changes and amendments in the tax law, what uh, the key issue that we need to put into consideration now is purpose to uh, is for each organizer to comply with the requirements of the law because the penalties and attendant interest are becoming are uh, huge for organizers to keep up with. And this will increase uh, the cost of doing the business and can bring about reputational damage where the company is not complying with the requirements of the law. So organization must ensure compliance with the tax law, a visa tax process and tax transparency. And we bring about the little thing that we're going to talk about corporate governance, which is all about transparency in the affair of the organization. So to achieve this, uh, we we'll look at company are, what the company are required to do, monitor, assess, and manage tax risk. In the past, the focus majorly actually tax department is saying are just one an appendage to financial uh, departments. And but with what we have seen in recent time, tax is taking major major issue, even though much more than finance, because whatever you do, the outcome of it is actually what the tax people deal with. And so you need a strong tax person, you need a management control and the management involvement in the taxation issue of the organization. It's, the time has gone where we leave the tax issue to only the, even though some organizations don't even, up to today, they don't have tax manager. So they don't have a coordinated effort to put this into a right perspective. And if this is not done, what we have seen is that whatever the sales, the revenue that have been made by the sales people, whatever the accountant have put together, the finance team has put at the financial statement, without proper recognition of the input of the tax department, this can expose the company to a serious uh, financial loss at the end of the day. So this is just basic thing that we are gonna look into deep, uh, deeply today. So we talk about uh, corporate governance, and I say corporate governance is just a process and the structure put together to actually bring about fairness, accountability, responsibility, and much more transparency in the bridge and the operation of the company. So without transparency, there is nothing the company is doing. And if this is what will lead us to the issue of taxation. Why do we need corporate governance in managing our tax practice? As I've said earlier, tax has gone beyond a, just a department putting things together. It is a requirement that somebody in charge of that will go to the board and present each issues, knowing fully well that each of the line of our business could lead to more to financial loss 
no matter how disciplined an organization is, if at required attention, not just attention, required attention is not put together to focus on tasks, it could lead to more financial loss and whatever the effort the management have put in place might not yield the desired results. So and that the basic purpose of corporate governance is to monitor those parties within a company which control the resources owned by investors. So if you want to control owned by the investors and you want to give a good report at the end of the year, the time has come to pay attention to tax issues because each of the activities of the investor of the stakeholders. And when we talk about the stakeholders, who are the stakeholders in the organization? We are talking about the employee, the government, the board of directors, and many more regulatory authority. They are all stakeholders. So not paying attention to what they could do can actually endanger the future of any organization or much more uh, lead to a material loss, financial loss that can erode away the investment of the investor or shareholders, as the case may be. And that is the purpose of the corporate governance in the financial framework that we are looking at today. As I said before I leave this stage, I talk about that the corporate governance is only about bringing about accountability, responsibility, fairness, transparency, and improvement in shareholders' value. And what we have said is that tax management is key to this issue in the present generation. The time has gone whereby the only people uh, then that used to be recognized at the board, they would tell you is the auditor, the financial management people. But we are saying now things have changed. Whatever everybody has done without much attention to what can take the money away from the system. And tax is one of those things that actually take money away from the system when it is not well done or well planned. And the reason for proper corporate governance into tax management and which will help and improve the value, the shareholders value in the organization. Please, are we, list, are we hearing my voice? Yes, sir. We are with okay. you, sir. Okay, thank you. And again, I'll talk about the corporate governance within the tax framework. I've actually explained this and we are seeing that because things have changed. In the era of global tax collaboration and exchange of information, everything is available everywhere. Everybody knows what you are doing and the regulatory authority through the exchange common reporting standard can actually get much more information about an organization. To this end, each organization should try to bring about transparency and a full disclosure or whatever they are putting together. And this is the requirement to avoid risk management. And this is one of those things and tax is very essential to risk management. By the time we get to the kind of uh, type uh, type of task risk, we understand better what I'm referring to when I talk about management of task risk management. We can't leave it any longer to just one person to edit the department without the input of the management, without proper management monitoring of what they are putting together. What, what about having the analysis of each items? Because whatever decision we are taking, we should, be, uh, we should be aware that it has tax implication. When we are putting opinion together, when we are borrowing money, when we are taking money from one, for example, within a group of company, in, in the past, we will say, okay, I own A, I own B. I can borrow money from any of them. I can use any of them. But these days, we are all aware. Transfer pricing will ask you, could you have taken that money without any interest from a third party? When you are selling to A, are you selling at market price? Are you selling at arm's length price? Would this one have been acceptable to a third party, non-related entity? Then the issues will crop up. These are the reasons why we talk about corporate governance within the tax framework. It has gone beyond ordinary and that has given value to tax practice that we need to do it well and do it properly. Uh, so uh, that's all about the first section of the presentation. We deal majorly with corporate governance and then the task risk management. Now we move uh, toward the task risk management section, which I think is the bone and the major of today's presentation. So under this, we are going to look at what is task risk? How can we manage task risk? And then the impact and the effect of task risk on our business. I said task risk is the risk that company may be paying 
or accounting for an incorrect amount of tax or that tax position a company adopt are out of step with the tax risk appetite that the directors have authorized. So it is it has come that, that a director must be involved representing the board with what, if you see the major organization we have today, we've seen people that call them that the head of tax management, task risk, instead of tax department, they've called it task risk uh, department, task risk management, not just tax department. Because one of the key issues in risk assessment is actually the exposure of the company to tax issues. So the tax department have actually metamorphosed from just uh, ordinary tax by to task risk management department because it goes deeper than just uh, what are we filing? What is uh, so we are not talking in this today about the tax compliance alone. We are talking about the structure that bring about the tax results at the end of the year. If attentions are not paid to this, it could lead to loss, financial loss on organization. So I said tax risk can take the form of financial loss in the form of increased tax cost, interest, and penalty if right things are not done. Uh, in tax management, we normally have a, what we call tax compliance circle. The moment you don't follow that circle, what happens is that there might be an exposure. We start from when you get advisory, before you put your business together, what are the tax issues? What am I accounting for? What am I recording? When, what, which of them is due on monthly basis? Which of them is due on annual basis? So these are the things that are put together. When you do this, then you come back to the issue of monthly compliance. And that's the compliance section of the tax. When you comply, you know, because accounting record, whatever you plan at the beginning must be recorded in your book in, in following the tax compliance circle. So whatever you record, remember, is what bring about the tax issue. So and the tax issue that, that came out of this is what actually will lead to filing of tax return. Whatever you file, remember that it's going to be on self-assessment and the tax authority will check on you, which could come in form of desk review. Hey, Mr. Taxpayer, you have paid this social so tax. Can we see the supporting document to be sure that right tax have been paid? Then it could come in form of tax audit, whereby people come into your office to come and review all the section of your book to be sure that what you have done is correct. And it could lead to litigation, whereby you disagree with tax authority and tax authorities also disagree with you. And then with facts, backing your facts or backing your position, you can head to court to seek for judicial interpretation of your position, which is a normal thing in tax practice. So whenever this circle, uh, there is an omission, probably we are bringing about tax risk. And tax risk will come about I will lead to tax loss when the compliance is not total or we leave the gap. So another thing that could come is that uncertainty associated with tax law. Uh, if company does not have a strong tax department, one, a strong tax advisor, uh, probably there might be an issue and omission in their tax compliance process. And when this crop up, what happens is that it could lead to financial loss. So we are, uh, what I used to tell everybody is that you need a strong tax department whereby they can actually address all issues appropriately. And then aside from the strong tax department also, it will be required that each entity must have a strong tax advisor, which will assist uh, in, in granting correct and adequate up-to-date opinion so the company can will, will be able to comply with the requirement of the law. For example, we've seen different changes and correction of error. Financial Act 20, 2019, by 2020, 2020 corrected many of the wrong assumptions in the past. And then these are, change, these are changing, these are changing. When actually a, 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 a dynamism of the environment is bringing a whole lot of changes to our tax law. So with all of this, an organization might not be able to survive without having a strong tax advisors. And I think that's what we do in our session and our client can testify to our position on many of these issues. And I say, what are the form of task risk? 
we talk about the transactional risk with the failure to tax or penal tax department consultant not involved in significant transaction. When it, oh, I remember one of the company I was seconded there in my former world, I was seconded to. Uh, this, I love their structure. I love their structure to the level that no matter the transaction going on within the payable department, it must be approved by the tax department. It's a must, it's a requirement. You need to sign on it. When you sign on it, the, uh, the system was using SAP and the transaction will be thrown on at you at the tax. I was, the, I was seconded as tax manager. Uh, it will come to me until I go through the, uh, go through the template and be sure that right uh, transactors have been applied and the structure were okay before it could be passed for, uh, for processing. And that system, I was there for the year the tax authority came for tax audit. No exposure. The first I've ever seen for transaction tax, no exposure. And that's what we are saying because the management put much attention into it. And because despite that they have tax people in their units, they came out to actually source for tax professional. And I was seconded from my former office then to go and head their tax department. So these are part of the thing you see as part of managing tax risk at multinational level. They don't give room uh, to unnecessary exposure. So also we can have compliance risk. What, is the, what are the compliance risks? Like late filing of tax return, deduction and remittance of incorrect tax, where you don't have competent, knowledgeable, technically, uh, technical stable people. This is kind of thing you can see. Deduction and remittance of incorrect tax, where we told the tax is 10%, individual might deduct 5%. And then when government has changed the law, I saw many things last year, when the VAT be, uh, became 7.5, I see, I found some entities still deducting 5% for a long time. I uh, say they are not aware that government have started this thing. So the reason why we need the right information, we need the right professional, and then we need the top, top advisors. Many of our transactions, we can share it with tax advisors to have their opinion before we implement this or put them into our county record. This is very key. Also, as, uh, we, up to today, we, are, we normally get uh, that as, Hey, Mr. Ascension, please assist us. Uh, my team pay uh, the money that is meant for VAT into uh, withholding tax account. The money that is meant for federal inland revenue service was paid to state inland, state internal revenue service. All these are the things that happen when we don't have strong monitoring uh, processes, tax risk assessment processes. Each of the return should be reviewed by professional. And that is the way to get things done. And uh, it is key for purpose of managing our tax risk exposure. And also you could have operational risk. What is operational risk? Failure to properly document a transaction. Untimely approval for tax payment, inexperienced tax staff. This could lead to operational risk. And when there is operational risk, there is no way we can hide anywhere. And then we can have also financial risk, inadequate financial record keeping. If you don't keep record, uh, proper record, that's why I said at the beginning that tax department is not tax, it's task risk management department now because documentation must be properly kept. You should have a checklist, an entire checklist in an organization whereby uh, all transactions are properly kept for tax purpose. Number one, if there's need for documenting and support document, do we have this available? And then what are the tax issues? These are, I once worked with, uh, with uh, one woman, very meticulous, very, very meticulous in one of the biggest organizations in Nigeria. Uh, then I was in my former world and I was seconded there as well. And so I worked under this woman in the early days. And no matter the document you requested for, this woman will link this document. He, she, asked, she had everything on her system. And as those documents are being processed by the accounting and finance department, our own case is that she has the checklist on each item. The instruction is that, let me have the source document because tax people will be here any moment from now. And anytime I look back, then the pressure was not even like this. I'm talking about 2003, 2004, 2005. The pressure for tax wasn't at this level, but this woman, the, best, the most organized woman I've ever come across. She was the tax manager of major multinational then, and she got the tax ready. 
all our job, you go to her, hey, Mrs. So, 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 please, can I get this document? Say, okay, give me a moment. Pa, 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 and you get the document. And that's part of managing the risk. But when you look at that organization and the focus, the entire organization give to that department, you will understand why they got a top notch to actually manage that their tax risk department. Because she was a tax, but she would dissect the entire financial statement to be sure that there was no exposure at all. And that is what I'm talking about, about having competent and to manage your tax departments. And then you could be sure that there won't be any loss, financial or material loss to the organization. And uh, also, when you have those strong people managing your tax, what you have done is that you are going to avoid risk, reputational risk. Because if you don't do the right thing, what you have is that the, the tax authorities they were doing in the past, uh, the former regime, the present regime has not done that. The former dispensation, whereby the public name of people that are not complying with tax, it's, it's, it's a stigma. An organization that your organization are, is being mentioned has not been complied with the requirements in the country. Most of the multinational in the last dispensation, they were embarrassed. Though some were done wrongly, whereby tax authorities have not done its job properly. But nonetheless, the, your, the name of organization should not be appearing uh, in such a, 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 in such a, a publication. And this part of the reputational risk. So sealing of business premises could bring about insult. Uh, one of the, I remember about four years ago where a company was having the board meeting and everybody, many people flew in from, flew in from uh, outside the country, they came in and it was in the course of that meeting, the tax, maybe tax authorities have gotten an uh, info that the company will be having their management meeting. And that was the day the tax authority went there to lock the company. Many of the expatriates were, they were embarrassed. They were embarrassed that, how come? How come? What you have seen is that a little bit of gap in part of managing the tax function. That's why I said tax function has become part of key corporate governance of an establishment to be sure that we are doing what is expected and as a responsible corporate entity, that such an exposure or wrong allegation are not coming at any point in time. Also, what could lead to the major issue that could lead to reputation risk, as we have seen before, is actually the ability to distrain of companies' assets, blocking of companies' accounts, and so the company cannot make a transaction, which I think is the height of the embarrassment under the last dispensation. It's not appropriate, and it should never be encouraged. But organizations will also learn to do the needful by focusing on their tax uh, process. So when we talk about the tax management risk, we talk about tax risk management process, what should we do? So what we are saying that integrating management of tax risk into overall risk management, enable an organization to generate efficiency, upgrade tax reporting, compliance and analytical process, and enhance financial resource while reducing the tax burden. So if we integrate tax risk management process, we can be sure that there won't be any gap. And what are these? Ordinarily, we start talking about risk identification, monitor and review, risk analysis, implement solution, risk evaluation. So each of the steps that we are taking, the company should take much, much effect to actually monitor what is going on part time and what they are ready to do, which is, uh, which must be done at all time. So if you don't give room for any of this exposure and then the risk are properly managed, it will be very clear to everybody that we have the best process on ground. And that is the focus the company should be done, should be done at the point in time. So we, we just a little bit of task risk management process. What does it entail? We talk about what are the task risk trigger how many years of tax open audits? So the summary of what you see that uh, we have under the previous slide is what we just try to put together here to explain what we need to do in putting this thing together. So the moment we put this together, then the company can actually have a better way of managing and I won't be surprised. We are talking about risk identification. We said, what are the tax risk triggers? How many years of tax open audits? 
If you have not been audited for quite some time, why have we not been audited? What could be the issue? Should tax authority come today? What, where, on what area? Haven't we done well? So we need to identify the risk and analyze the reason why we've not been audited. Remember that when companies are not audited for a long time, it could be one of the reasons for tax investigation. Because when you have not done the right thing, it could lead to tax investigation. Now, why are you not being audited? Again, we say risk analysis. We say analyze the risk to determine if it is high. What is the risk? So what are the quantitative and quantitative impacts on the book of the company? Then we do the risk evaluation. When we say we are doing the risk evaluation, what is the risk of non-compliance or non-disclosure? So all this should be done. And usually there is something process we call task head check. When you see that a new organization comes around, when uh, we, for us in Ascension, when we take a new client, the first thing we normally ask for is to carry out tax head check. <coughs> Excuse me. Why we are doing tax head check is basically to be sure to manage, to understand and identify existing risk and we can manage this risk. And that is the first thing we do. What is management risk level? And also we like to understand the management risk appetite. What is the level of their risk they can take? I've seen organizations that said, I'm not going to pay any tax. <coughs> Excuse me. That they are not going to pay any tax until tax authority comes and they are ready to pay penalty and interest. That's it, that's their plan. So when you see such a plan, then you will require appropriate advisory to change their mentality and their, their process. The reason why I keep saying that is it's essential that before you take a job or you check an organization, you need to understand tax risk management process in-house. You need to evaluate the risk. And so this will help you to provide appropriate advisory. Then how do you make a, a implement solution? I say make adequate task provision for potential tax liability. By the time we carry out task head check, what we do is that whatever we arrive at, we check the book of the company, then we advise them, you need to make provision for this, or you go ahead to make payment for those ones that are absolutely clear. For the other one, we say make provision for this, or the tax audit is carried out by the company. And then we continue to monitor, you set up a competent tax function. Competent to monitor and review a strong, uh, Task department is required, which will manage, which will be called task risk management uh, department. So you set up a strong one, or you outsource to a strong tax advisor for the purpose of managing the tax. All this will help to keep up uh, up to date with relevant tax legisl legislation and the changes in tax law. These are part of task risk management process. From number one, I repeat again, risk identification. Anal 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 analysis of the identified risk, evaluation of the risk, implementation, suggesting solution, the way to move forward, and also monitor and review the implementation. If you finish this work, you can't stop. You need somebody to continue pushing the work to avoid future or unplanned liability. So you need to seek for tax advice on a regular basis and management is supposed to be involved. So this is not the time to leave the tax function to just let's get somebody from finance. What we used, uh, what used to be done before that, just get somebody in finance, but you go and manage the tax on a monthly basis with that proper advisory, with that proper risk management. I think uh, the business has gone beyond that. All uh, the legislation is everywhere. The changes, the focus and the attention is everywhere about proper management of tax. So I look at value of tax risk management framework. What are the uh, value of tax risk management framework? And I said the implementation of a tax risk management framework should not only promote governance and address as well as reduce tax risk, but may also create value such as what value do we get when we have a functioning uh, tax risk management? What value does the organizer derive? Is it, it provides the organizer the ability to proactively evaluate legislative changes and the potential impact on business. You know, the tax can only advise. The core issue, especially when there are, there are changes in tax function, Ta changes in tax function will definitely bring about changes in our accounting setup. 
changing our accounting processing house, changing our reporting formats. So all the and changing our accounting package, that will be changes. So this is not what just a department can do. The reason why we say it's all about the entirety of management process, the entirety of management process. Because when tax department cannot say because, oh, there is a change in the Finance Act now. VAT is now uh, 7.5%. Uh, some aspect of construction is now 2.5% with total tax. They cannot do that because the accounting package have already been set at 5%, 10%, and at five. So when you are going to do that, it requires the attention and the involvement of the entire management process to be sure that writing are put in place. So also part of the value that is discovered is that uh, that's of the level of comfort to all stakeholders, the risk is maintained at an acceptable level. So all this, uh, the stakeholder, the risk management are comfortable with the process of managing the risk and ensure that tax strategy, policy, and processes are standardized and integrated within the wider organization. So it's not only about tax department, it's not only about tax department, but it is the entire process. It is the entire process because it involves everybody. It's cut across. So when we have organization, for example, we have a manufacturing entity, and then what do you expect them to do? The sales people to be advised, whatever they are selling, what is the applicable, we told it on VAT on it, the supply, uh, the recognition of the VAT input and output, when we are bringing items for our people that are in charge of acquisition. What about the VAT aspect on it? Uh, what about buying across the counter? What could be the, the, rest, the reaction of tax authority when you have huge uh, expenses and you call it across the counter transaction? You know, this, it goes beyond. So the value of tax risk management, it, it actually goes beyond this. It brings the company into comfort zone and it infuses confidence, confidence in the shareholders that yes, the, our money, my investment is safe because it's been properly managed. Uh, I hope we are hearing me. Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. We can okay. hear you. Sir. Okay. Thank you. So, and then, so the next section is all about task risk control. We've identified the risk. Uh, we've talked about the value of the task risk management. We've looked at the type of risk and we've looked at the process, the entire from the identification point to the setting up of appropriate risk management department. But we're now going to look at task risk controls. What are these risk control? So given the unique and specialized nature of task reporting function, task related control may not always be independent tested. So we need to look at what do, what do we need to do for the purpose of task control. And then we look at each organization be able to demonstrate that all key control led to the task have been clearly identified. Because to control tests is to just carry out what we call work through tests in our establishment from beginning to the end and identify the tax points and see what we are doing at each point. Number one, recognition. Number two, compliance. And then number three, filing. So if we test each of these control, then we are comfortable with what we have, then the company can go to rest. So we said testing frequency of this control are known by the task function. For example, we make provisions, accurate. What are the impact of this on our tax results at the end of the year? On our financial results, when there are your know, disposal of assets, for example, it's a function we need to test. What happened about the capital gain? Does it lead to capital gain test, uh, tax? Or is it all about the uh, capital uh, allowances and the others? So we, these are the tests we need to know and test it with the result that we are having. We also said that any control breakdown remedy. Uh, remediation action and communicate to tax function. So when we carry out the test, what we are doing is just to be sure that things are functioning the way it should be. For you to do risk assessment, it is essential that you test the control. If there is a gap in any of the control, be sure that there will, might likely be an exposure. So the purpose of control is just to test the results and see whether it aligns with expected results. If it doesn't align, please, that's supposed to be a quick action to be sure that we are not leaving and we are not creating any exposure at any point in time. And I will talk about uh, in this thing, what are the methods 
of testing of the control testing. So we uh, we can do there are different methods that we can use to actually test whether we are complying with the control or not. We can do inquiry or not an inquiry into appropriate personnel. Uh, when we check, for example, let's talk about the PAYE. We can go to the HR and finance section and test, pick one person and see whether they are fired. Check the time the PAYE, PAYE should be paid on or before the 10th of the following month. We can check, was this paid? Then we move to uh, NSITF. When was it paid? We check the return and check the requirement of the law. So each of these, when we are checking, then we can be sure. What about the monthly return? So we can actually feed those forms. When were this filed? When were this submitted? And then observation, observing the company tax operation and system of accounting for taxes. So if you don't have good system that account for taxes, we will have the problem. So it's the method actually starts with the kind of accounting packet that we are using. If we are going to use manual, that might likely be exposure, and I think the business have, uh, have grown that. Also, we take inspect or relevant contract agreement, amendment documentation. This is key. It's very key for us to actually check the uh, agreement that we are signing with other organizations. It's very, very key. And it's what, what where, where the tax exposure is actually uh, generated. It is the beginning of the tax exposure. Many of those contracts were assigning the obligations and responsibility the, uh, 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 in line with the scope of work. Actually, that is the point where we commence the issue of tax exposure. So if these are not properly uh, followed, the flow of transaction, including how these are uh, initiated, authorized process. Uh, many offshore uh, transactions that attention were not paid to that. I, have, I can transfer money at any time without much attention to the tax issue. These are, these are part of the test control that you will expect an organization to do to minimize or eliminate risk. We need to test from beginning inquiry and check what we are doing. Whatever the contract, it needs to be reviewed, send it to proper advisors. If the tax department doesn't have a strong tax department, uh, you can get a tax advisor and at all time request from them their tax position, whether things are right or not. So I just give an example of walkthrough for preparing a company's income tax. And then what you have here is just to look at example of a test. I said, okay, what are the tax return process? What do we do? Review closing balance and carry forward items for previous tax year. So this is expect to be sure that we are not creating gap. Key control, control, manual automation, sign off, year and checklist. So what you have seen in this table without necessarily taking us through this table is just an example of what I mentioned initially about setting up a checklist. With this checklist, it, this will ensure that there is no omission at any point in time. So if there is no omission, what we have done is that we are sure that there is not going to be any risk in finding our task. We just did it alone just for company income tax return. Similar thing could be done uh, particularly for VAT filing on monthly basis, uh, we do the tax filing on monthly basis, PAYE. We can do work through. The big various factor that will impact the current year tax return. New tax law, has there been any change? What aspects of the change affect our operation? I, I say affected our country standard, recognition of certain items. Is there any full disclosure that is required now? These are the things that need to be put into consideration when we are setting up our risk uh, assessment process. We must have a checklist, usually for almost everything that we do. And that is the way to go. So all this, what you have is just the task risk, uh, task return process from beginning to the end and what is expected. And the table you have below, you see here, is just what I just analyzed uh, above now. Just for us to see review of closing balance. And when you have this in the system, there is no way you will create gap. So you just need competent people to undo this. And then before you submit your return, and everybody can go 
and rest and be sure that we have done the requirement. So then we can do testing. Additionally, we can test operational effectiveness. So if the design effectiveness of a corner is adequate and is there to reduce the identified task risk, the control should then be tested for operational effectiveness. Is it effective? The control we have. And in determining the operational effectiveness, the following checks should be carried out. Whether the control is operating as designed, because if you don't check regularly, it might not be working as expected. It might not be working as expected. So there should be constant check. Who are the people performing the control? Do they have the authority and competence to perform the control? So we should ensure people are authorized and responsibility are properly assigned. So um, what I'm saying is uh, what we have here. So whether the control is opening, upon confirmation, the following test need to be carried out. Inquiry of, of appropriate personnel, observation of the company operation, inspection of relevant documentation. is almost the same thing that we're talking about, about method of testing, whether the control is effective or not. So, and then we have an example here, testing of control operation effectiveness. So we take sample, all these are, what we have here without Nestle belaboring you with this thing entirely, is that we, the control, there must be a checklist to test the control of each taxes. With the checklist, we can appropriately manage the risk exposure of the organization. Uh, it's not what we do every day. It's not what we do that anytime we want to fight tax, the company should be afraid or be shaken. It is what is all obvious to everybody that must be considered at every point in time. So a uh, test of control, we've talked about this competence of assessing control tests and internal control deficiency. When rely on the work of others, the competence of those undertaking control. So getting the right people to manage your time, that's the emphasis I've been saying. You need the required qualification. When you put somebody, for example, that is non-tax practitioner, that does not have accounting qualification to support the tax issue, uh, that might not understand how to interpret the litigate or the tax provisions, then what you have is that you might not have capable hand to manage your tax department. So we are saying that to check this, then you need to consider educational level, professional certification, supervision and review of work performed, quality of working paper. So if there is an internal control, Ms. Ida, so we must have a strong internal control to support the task risk management. Without this, there might be issues. So upon completing this test, evidence collected should be retained and results clearly documented. When we put all this together, then the company can be functioning, share with the management, get their buy. It is essential that task department get the buy-in of the management for them to be able, for the parent to be able to resolve all the issues. And then lastly, the last segment in this uh, presentation is actually we're going to be talking, which is the part four, we are going to be talking about assessment procedure and tax uh, penalty. I'm, I'm sure that we are all familiar with this, so I'm going to talk about it briefly, and then when questions come uh, after that, we're going to treat the question together. So uh, the task professional advice to adapt to the follow-up in mitigating tax risk. So articulate the tax life cycle from seeking to evaluate. So you need to put the tax requirement together and what is expected to be done each time. So you need to we need to identify the category of tax risk that arise in the life cycle. I talk about the life cycle of tax compliance. So we need to monitor what is required to be sure that the company is not exposed uh, exposed to any gap. So uh, I talk about the circle and that is what you have here. So articulate all these are just the process that we must follow to be sure that we comply with the assessment procedure. You need the competent and to manage your task function. This will reduce the risk or eliminate the risk. You need the management buying uh, buy for task department to function appropriately and ensure that there is no exposure anywhere for the business. And you need to infuse confidence in the shareholders and to be sure, because the moment there is a reputation risk at any point in time, whereby you cannot function, the account is locked by tax authority, 
the, the name of the company comes in the newspaper as one of the non-compliant clients, what you see is that wherever the investors are, they will not be comfortable. So this brings us back to assessment procedure. So what are the type of tax assessment? We are aware of this and what the tax authority normally do. Um, I can't talk about this thing completely, but let's talk about them briefly because this is what we do every day. So we say tax assessment can be assessment or government assessment. Uh, this assessment may be based on income or profit of a company. And what are the type? With the best of judgment, that is according to the tax authority. They look at what you are doing and maybe you have filed tax return before. They consider what you have done in the previous year and they might come to assess you when you don't file your return. And the minimum tax actually is not particularly, the, the new law has changed a whole lot of things here. Um, so the minimum tax assessment is uh, about 50% of what you have here, but it's not, it's all about when you don't make uh, enough profit for the purpose of tax, or you compute it, you compare it with what is tax payable. The, the, the best way we do with minimum tax assessment is where you don't make is into two, where you don't make profit at all, one, or you don't make enough profit that you compare with the affiliate uh, what total tax payable. And then whichever, whichever is higher is what I would consider. So, and again, additional assessment. This is after you have submitted your return and tax authority find you culpable and uh, they can come again to add, uh, to send an additional assessment and you come and pay more. You know that most of our assessment is actually based, uh, most of our assessment are based on self-assessment. So when the tax authority discovered after the audit, additional assessment could be raised at any point in time. Then we have revised assessment. The first assessment could come, the first assessment could come in form of, uh, whenever there is a, objection to the assessment tax authorities have raised and then they can look at it and revise the assessment and that's what we have on the revised assessment so what are the taxes and the attended penalty company income tax we are aware of this late return take it to 25 percent five thousand per month uh, uh for each uh subsequent month the first month of failure to file and then subsequently late payment attract 10 percent plus uh, interest and this is what financial loss that can erode the money, the investment, the investors' value. That's why we said attention must be paid to tax department and tax management. We talk about the petroleum profit tax. So, so we talk about pet, petroleum profit tax. Also, the late filing attract ten thousand for the first month, and then. 2000 for each subsequent month. And late payment attract penalty of 5% of tax payable. But late payment is actually 10% across board. So late payment attract penalty with total tax, the same, you can see the VAT. So these are the attendant penalty for each of the taxes when we are not complying at any point in time. So the exposure is there and it can take away the value of the investment. The investor's value could be taken away when we are not complying. And the reason why we said it requires corporate governance directive and approach for the purpose of management of task risk uh, function in an organization. Transfer pricing, you know, before people don't take the issue of transfer pricing uh, very important, but with the attendant penalty and interest is being taken very serious these days. And this is the penalty attendant penalty on transfer pricing. And NITD also, uh, that is a uh, failure to comply with national information technological development levy. This has not been properly clear, but that, one, that is 1% of profit before tax by relevant organization. The company that are applicable here, they are the uh, telecom, pension, and the financial institution generally. Personal income tax, remember the filing of annual filing, is 500,000. And late payment is also 10% plus 19% uh, interest. The industrial training fund. We also have penalty here, which is required also. So when we are not complying with all these rules, what we see that we expose the company 
to a whole lot of penalty and interest. So what we've said today, uh, before I conclude actually is that uh, we, if we sum this thing together, we will see the, the need for corporate governance, whereby all about transparency, uh, accountability, responsibility, whereby to protect the value of an organization and keep the, the, uh, the business of the company at minimum, uh, at less risk level. And that is what is required to run the business. So most activity in conclusion, which I put here, I said most activity that impact tax risk occur outside the tax function, confirm. Yet business unit and functions typically view tax as an afterthought that was there. And as an administrative, as opposed to a risk management issue, managing taxes and risk, risk require a global approach. There is no way. Because what happened with tax function is not tax department that generate the risk. It is an activities outside, outside the tax function. But because of proactiveness, because of the involvement of the management in a way of corporate governance, everybody is involved. Everybody is involved, and then the risk is minimized or completely eliminated. Uh, thank you for your time. I think I can stop here, and that's the end of the paper. Uh, if you have more further questions after now, then we can take the questions uh, and dissect the remaining work. Thank you. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Larawaji, for that insightful presentation on tax risk control tests and assessment procedures. You've been able to take us deep into the topic and you have brought some very, very salient uh, issues to the fore, which I believe our participants have uh, gained a lot from and will help us even as uh, governance professionals and tax administrators. Thank you very much for that presentation. Now, without much ado, we're going to take uh, questions. So our uh, dear participants, if you, have, if you have questions, please just indicate by typing same in the chat box or raise your hand so that our dear facilitator can do justice to your questions. So please, let's have your questions quickly. Um, Mr. Alaru, would you please, you can uh, respond to the questions uh, okay. in the chat box. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've seen the first questions here and uh, the individual is asking, how can we classify, uh, say, can we classify, um, determine or uh, classify the risk analysis such as high, medium, and low. It depends on the impact and the economic value of each of those risks. And uh, that's what we determine. Let's take, for example, um, you discover that uh, we've not been filing our tax return. And then the monthly returns, we've not been filing. And someone asks, and then you put this together. And if, what would be the risk classification here? For number one, for late return penalty, for interest, and for possible tax investigation. The risk is high, and that's the classification. But if you check the return, we have been up to date. The only month we have not filed is just one month. Then the risk for higher penalty will be medium or low, depending on the value of the VH or the amount we have to pay. For example, the first one you have not been filed is about 50 million. Apply the penalty, that will be high. Then you look at, okay, the risk this month we've not filed and the total money is actually about 500,000. That's okay, the risk is low. So that is what we are referring to about the classification and what, how you determine whether it is high, either medium or low. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alaru. Thank you, Mr. Alaru. Uh, 